Hi everyone, welcome to a new video format that I will be trying out on my channel this year. I will basically call this monthly roundup and empties because what I uh, will meet with monthly roundup will basically be new products that I have purchased, old products that I have rediscovered, favorites, products that have disappointed me. Um, just talking about stuff that has stood out to me either positively or negatively in the past month or two. I don't promise that I will be doing these monthly because I'm not sure that I can really keep something like this up on a monthly basis, but I will at least try to do it every other month or something. Uh, and if you're very lucky, maybe I actually end up doing it every month, who knows. And then an old new section of this video will be empties. I used to do empties on my channel a lot in the very beginning of my channel, back in like 2014, 15, 16. And then at some point I realized that I have no interest in filming these videos, you have no interest in watching them, so I kind of stopped doing them. So I will start to revisit that part of my channel a little bit, but in this new format where I will just throw them in together with my monthly roundup. And I think what will end up happening with the empties is that you're mostly going to see uh, skincare empties because I don't go through makeup that quickly in order to have a lot of makeup empties to share with you. Maybe like once or twice a year there will be a interesting makeup empty to share with you but for the most part I think it will be a uh, skincare. Now the way I'm going to go through this is basically a little bit in the uh, sequence of events of how I apply my makeup so I'm first going to be talking about the product that is not really new to my collection and I purchased already quite a while ago but I sort of rediscovered in the past month or so and that is my uh, Bendy Avocado Concealer from First Aid Beauty. This was a concealer that was recommended to me by Melissa Gold here on YouTube who has started posting videos again which is very exciting. I love Melissa, go check her out. I will leave a link to her video in the description box below. And Melissa and I are, um, I think she's a bit younger than me but let's say we're in the same phase of our lives. We have children, uh, we have a job, uh, our skin has started to age and especially our under eyes are very dehydrated and quite dry. And I am always on the lookout for a concealer that is not going to look like the Sahara Desert underneath my eyes because about 99.95% of the concealers that I have tried do that. So I am always very conservative when it comes to concealer. I used to always use the um, Salma Skin Concealer from Skin Food. Yes, it's a Korean brand and um, it's like a pot concealer. It has a very uh, peachy, orangey undertone to it, so it conceals, I think, blue circles like blue purple uh, underbags quite well. I don't have that concealer to show you anymore because I passed it on to someone as I was getting quite, you know, bored with it. So I had to stop filming because my camera gave a message that it was overheating a little bit uh, and I'm not exactly sure where I was. I was rambling about concealer because I wanted to let you know that um, I have rediscovered the Bendy Avocado Concealer from First Aid Beauty. Now I have a haul of two concealers in my collection. Uh, this one in two different shades because I bought the originally the shade 03 light which turned out to be way too dark. Let me just quickly show you. So this is the shade uh, 03. It's a nice shade but it is way too deep for me to be considered light and it is even I think too deep for me as a foundation shade. Uh, so I think I will keep this in my collection too because at some point in my life I am going to go back to the beach, get a tan and I will need deeper shades of concealer and foundation. So hopefully this will come in handy even this summer fingers crossed. And the uh, shade that I purchased after that was this one. This is the shade 02 Light. No, sorry. This is the shade 02 Fair. And this is the perfect shade for me to use as a concealer. So um, I purchased this concealer, but then I still had my Clarins Eastern Concealer in my collection. And I kind of thought, you know what, I've been using that Clarins Concealer for a really long time. And I feel like it's probably uh, getting to the point now where it will be finished. And I kept using it and using it and using it and it just wasn't finishing up and eventually I decided in the beginning of this year, you know, I'm just going to swap between the two because I remember really liking the formula of this and I still really do. It's a very hydrating formula. I don't know whether you're going to be a huge fan of this formula if you don't struggle with dry under eyes. I also can't vouch for how high coverage this is because I apply my concealers very very lightly. I hate to pile up foundation and concealer on my face because I feel like it always looks very cakey. So I cannot vouch for how much this is really going to conceal if you have very dark circles underneath your eyes, but I can vouch for this being one of the best concealers to use if you have very dry under eyes. 
Another sort of rediscovering my collection is my uh, Estee Lauder Double Wear Nude Foundation. So this foundation has been discontinued uh, and I wasn't even aware of this until a couple of months ago and luckily I have already found a substitute like a due for this foundation but that's not the point. I kind of rediscovered this foundation in the last couple of months because uh, last year I was kind of more focused on finishing up my Dior Backstage Foundation and I think my Dior Backstage Foundation is like somewhere up down to here but this foundation is somewhat deeper in tone for me to use in the winter so in the winter I always go back to my other foundations and this year I decided to go back to the Estee Lauder Double Wear Nude and oh my god I, I still just really really enjoy the formula of this foundation it's a very um light coverage very uh liquidy type of formula but it looks very illuminating very hydrating on the skin uh compared to the one from dior i find this to be just a tad more um luminous on the skin not luminous in like oily or very dewy but it is a bit more dewy than the dior foundation the dior foundation settles more into like a natural satin matte finish whereas this one is really more of like a light dewy finish such a gorgeous formula i really love this foundation and i would like to finish this product up because i've had it for the past two years so i kind of decided to focus on it again and i've really been enjoying it another product that i have had in my collection for a while but i wasn't really using very consistently because i was trying to pan um another product um in this category i don't know why i'm so weird about okay um i cannot use something even if i have it in my collection and i don't have to purchase it i cannot use it unless i have finished something else it's a really stupid way of thinking because it basically means that some of the products in your collection are sitting for years and years and years unused because it takes you years or it takes me anyway years to uh, pan especially like complexion products foundation concealer powder it takes me years to go through these so I don't know why I'm being so silly about it and I've really been trying to be better about it this year by just um rotating a little bit more consistently through all the products that I have in a certain category like foundations, concealers and powders. So the powder that I have sort of rediscovered um, and not really rediscovered, I already knew that this is a formula that I really really enjoy and uh, the formula in question is the ambient lighting powders from Hourglass. Now the powder that I finished panned completely was the hourglass uh, ambient lighting powder in the shade moodlight moodlight has that very light lavender tone to it which is supposed to like brighten up your complexion and whatever beautiful formula the color never really bothered me but every now and then i would notice that my face looks a little bit more pink than i would like to so um i want to say already in march 2020 i purchased a mini of dim light because dim light seems like a much more appropriate color for someone of my skin tone it's much more you know beige neutral toned and um the promise of the same kind of formula was what lured me in to purchase this mini now like i said i delusionally thought that in a couple of months i'll be done with mood light and i can switch to this one it took me until the end of 2021 to finish mood light but in the meantime i had only used this powder a couple of times and since i finished mood light and i've been rotating through my powders a bit more now that i'm rotating through all the powders in my collection i can confidently say that i still think that the ambient lighting powder formula is my favorite finishing powder formula and i really love this color so if i ever go through the other finishing powders that i have in my collection so in about a decade more or less give or take um, I will, and I finish this one, I will be allowed to buy a full size of this because it is my favorite finishing powder without a doubt. I have tried others and others work really well as well and the thing I like the most about this specific powder is that it doesn't mattify my skin too much. Like some of the more blurring powders that I have in my collection, like the uh, setting powder, the loose setting powder from Pat McGrath, that powder blurs your pores like no other it makes your skin basically look filtered but also leaves my skin looking a little bit more dry it's not really a problem because over the course of the day my oils peek through and you know everything just kind of starts to look more dewy anyway but i just like the 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 finish of this one off the get-go more than the one from Pat McGrath. Now I'm going to mention a couple of products that are fairly new to my collection and I recently spoke about in a little like mini haul and try on. Uh, the first one is the diffused light, the diffused light, no the diffused bronzed light 
also from Hourglass and also in a mini. So in the end of 2021, I did a declutter uh, of my makeup collection and I decluttered a couple of bronzers. And upon decluttering my Too Faced Ch Chocolate Soleil bronzer, there was a real gap in my collection for a more neutral toned, almost more cool toned bronzer. And I searched high and low to see what people would recommend and I came across this specific powder. And luckily Hourglass is smart enough to offer these powders in a mini format because oh my gosh, I would never have gone through a full size of that bronzer. But I am super happy that I purchased this bronzer because it is, it fits perfectly into that gap that I had in my collection and my need for a bronzer now has been satisfied. It has the perfect finish because it looks much more natural, much more illuminating in a way compared to the Too Faced one, which was very, very matte and the reason why I decluttered it. And it has the perfect undertone. It is exactly that neutral, slightly cool leaning undertone, but without being too um, cool toned. And the thing about it is that it looks super light in the pan. And when I first swatched it, I thought this is never going to show up on my face. No fucking way. But then you start applying it and it first applies very subtly and then you build it up and it actually builds up to quite the deep intensity. So um, yeah, it's quite impressive really what this powder can do. So I'm super happy with my purchase to the point where a couple of days ago when I received an email that Victoria Beckham Beauty had restocked all the shades of her bronzer, which was something that I had on my wish list, I kind of decided that I don't really need that bronzer for the time being. I'm still very curious about her brand um, and I still think the bronzer is one of the few products that I'm really really uh, excited to try. But I sort of fed the beast now and I don't really feel the need to buy another bronzer in the coming few months. Especially because I'm sort of low-key hoping that mother Pat McGrath is going to treat us with a bronzer release this spring. So I'm kind of going to wait it out. And see what happens and I'm going to chill and maybe at some point if Victoria Beckham Beauty or Cult Beauty restocking these bronzers does a 20% off sale or something like that I might pick up these bronzers because I'm just super curious about the brand but for the time being I've decided to take a chill pill and I'm not going to go for that bronzer. Two other products that I purchased recently so I haven't had the chance to use them that long but I can already tell you that I really enjoy are my two uh, melting powder blushes that I purchased from Suku about one and a half week ago. So the two colors that I purchased are the shades 05 and 08. Let me quickly show them to you. So this is the shade 05, this is the shade 08. Um, I am just head over heels in love with the texture and the formula on these. This is the most silky lightweight, natural looking, pleasant on the skin, kind of like smoothing um, cream to powder formula. These are not powders, these are definitely a very lightweight cream to powder and they are exquisite in terms of their formula. And what I find with the range of the colors that they have released for this uh, specific release, the melting, the melting powder blushes, the all the colors are just so incredibly beautiful, so flattering, so such good colors. I had a really hard time limiting myself to only two colors and um, I'm very happy with both colors that I purchased but I will uh, give you a heads up. The color, I'm sorry, it's very very sunny outside so I have a lot of um, glare coming in from outside. Uh, but the color that really stands out to me is, is the shade 05 because I have really nothing like it in my collection. It's a very... Um, <sighs> How do I describe this color? It's a very unoffensive orange, like a, almost like a nude orange brown. I don't know how else to describe it. It looks really flattering. I'm really in love with this color. You're going to hear a lot about it in the coming months and you're going to see it demoed in my videos very often. The uh, other color that I have, the shade 08, is it super unique? No, it's not. It's sort of like that classic, like browny, ready terracotta shade. But with that said, it still stands on its own feet even when you compare it to other blushes uh, with similar colors from other brands. Because what I find with similar colors from other brands it, is that they tend to lean much more pink and like bronzy pink, whereas this one leans really more into the orange brown, you know, um, undertones. And this is where my personal preference lies. So I really enjoy this blush. Let's talk a little bit about eyeshadow. I have three eyeshadow palettes to share with you. 
starting off with a palette that I purchased for uh, Black Friday of last year. This is the uh, Face and Eye Glam Palette from Natasha Denona. This is the dark version and oh my gosh, I really love this palette. It's just such a well done palette in every single way and this is coming from someone who doesn't like to mix different types of products um, in the same location. Like a blush, um, highlighter and eyeshadow is a no-no for me. I do not like to mix my products. Give me my blush and my bronzer uh, and my highlighter separate from each other. Give me my eyeshadow separate. I just, I don't like to mix and match like that. But this is the first product in my collection that I've really, really enjoyed having everything in one. I just simply love them. The blush is a gorgeous, again, cream to powder formula. I compared this to the Suki blushes when I did my mini haul uh, video and what I can tell you as a conclusion from that comparison was the, the formula is just a tiny bit more waxy compared to the one from Suku, but it's still a beautiful cream to powder, very flattering, very lightweight, super nice on the skin. The highlighter is stunning. It is um, very reminiscent of the formula of Golden Nectar from Pat McGrath Labs. It looks super beautiful on the skin. There's really not much to say other than I love the face products and just as much I love the eyeshadows. Are they boring browns? Yes, they are. Especially like the three mattes. I don't know, Natasha Denona has that thing where she makes browns but she makes undertones of browns that I really enjoy. I really enjoy the tones of these browns. They are exactly the types of undertones that I really like to wear. And the two metallic shades, the two metallic shades are outstanding. They're in that beautiful formula that she has where it is very um, smooth on the lid and it almost looks like glass, like that wet lid effect. Um, this shade here, the, the deeper shade is really pretty but I don't wear it as much as I wear the like taupey neutral shade because this shade has absolutely stolen my heart. It is so so beautiful. It has a gorgeous very difficult to describe very unique undertone to it. It has a bit of warmth but at the same time it's taupey and cool toned and I've just really been enjoying this palette on days when I'm like uh, I don't know what to do and I want to do something pretty but I don't feel like thinking about it too much and then I will grab my Natasha Denona face and eye palette and I will create a look that I will always really enjoy so there you have it. I okay let's quickly talk about the Bridgerton palette from Pat McGrath Labs because um, I have more mixed feelings about this. I don't regret owning it because there are a couple of really standout shades in here but at the same time it's not the kind of palette or it's not one of Pat's palettes that really you know gives me the jitters. A lot of her other palettes I will look at them and I'll be like oh I can't wait to use this. This one is more like, like yeah it's fine you know I'll take it but it's not a palette that gets me super excited. The only eyeshadow in here that gets me very very excited is this one here the shade Duchess Divinity because their, the tone, the texture, the shine on this shade is just absolutely unbelievable and I am, I am in love with this eyeshadow. Now with that said, Eleganza from the Divine Rose 2 palette is extremely similar, um, which is why I would hesitate to say that you really need this palette for this eyeshadow if you already have the Divine Rose 2 palette. Of course I really enjoy the Astro shade, I think the uh, brown mauve shade here up here is also very nice. The Shades that I'm not as excited about, unfortunately, are the pink and the um, raspberry shade. The raspberry shade is cute and something that I might get joy out of wearing like once or twice a year, but in general not something that I would, you know, be looking forward to using. And it's a shame because these two shades specifically are sort of a new formula from Pat McGrath. They are a sort of like a baked matte. It's very strange, but they remind me of a baked matte formula because they have a little bit of a sheen to them, but for the most part they behave like mattes. I specifically reach for this palette when I want to do a look with the mauve purple, the Duchess Divinity shade and um, the Astral up here, but at the same time it's not one of my uh, most prized possessions that I have obtained in the last, you know, month or two. A palette that I would actually say that is a prized possession and that I'm really really excited to own 
is the C-3PO palette from the Star Wars uh, collab that Pat McGrath Labs did um, two, and a half, two years ago or so. I didn't originally purchase this palette because it contains a couple of repeat shades, namely the shade Corruption, the shade Bronze and the shade Gold Standard. And this shade also reminded me too much of other pur purples from Pat that I already have in my collection. So I thought, you know, it's not worth for me to purchase the whole palette just for two eyeshadows even if I'm a huge Star Wars fan and even if I'm sad to not have an eyeshadow palette with C-3PO on it. However, um, luckily for me, my good friend Bia decided to declutter this palette because she has the Celestial Divinity palette and as you know the Celestial Divinity palette contains both of the original Star Wars palette as well as six um, new eyeshadows in it. So she thought there is no point for her to keep both palettes she will never use them up and she didn't deem herself a big enough Star Wars fan to really keep the C-3PO uh, just for the fandom. So she actually sent me this palette in the beginning of this year and I received it, I want to say a day or two before my birthday, so it felt like a birthday present. And I have fallen head over heels with this palette. I actually really enjoy the combination of the colors. I'm not mad at the repeats that I have in this palette because I feel like the color story makes a lot of sense together. And I have fallen head over heels, head over heels, with this shade here, the shade Gold Allure. Oh my god, let me quickly swatch it so that I can show you. It's a light champagne gold with a bit of a lime green duochrome to it, but it just has that beautiful shine on it and um, this more sparkly textured formula from Pat McGrath. It's not a very textured shade, but it is a bit more flaky and a bit more impactful and I just Oh, I have been enjoying this eyeshadow palette so, so much. So thank you so much, Bia, for sending this my way. I'm really grateful for that. Now I want to talk about uh, lash products, which is not something that I usually mention on the regular in my videos, which is a shame because I actually have opinions. So around Black Friday, I made a purchase from our local makeup store because they had 40% uh, off mascaras. And I really wanted to try the uh, Monsieur Big from Lancome and I saw that they also had their um, eyelash primer, the Sealy, what is it called? The Lancome Seals Booster XL, so this product. And you may not notice about me because I don't really do my lashes on camera, but I do actually use an eyelash primer already for years. And my favorite for the past at least three years has been the uh, Estee Lauder Little Black Primer. I have a video where I demo how I use this, uh, this primer. I love this. And then I thought, you know, maybe it's time for me to try something new. So I picked up the uh, primer together with the mascara because even though they were still around the 20 euro mark, which is relatively expensive, they were not as expensive as their original price was. Um, what are my thoughts? The primer. I don't like the primer. And the thing is, it's not a bad primer depending on what kind of effect you're looking for. If you're looking for something that will give you a lot of like volume and thickness to your lashes, then great, you are going to enjoy this a lot. But what I look for in a primer is two things. First of all, a bit of volume and second of all, to hold the curl and to like uh, make my lashes look a bit longer. And that is not what this primer does for me. Um, I have like thick, relatively straightish, like not like cow straight, but like not also super curled lashes. I have a bit, well, actually you can see the curl of my lashes right now because this shit doesn't hold the curl at all. No matter what I do, if I wait a little bit, if I wait a lot, it just does not hold a curl. Even if your lashes are already completely dried, you know, they have the curl, they hold the curl, you go in with the mascara and then the mascara kind of wets the primer and your lashes go so, no matter how long I wait and no matter what I do, I cannot get this primer to work for me. I really love my little black primer from Estee Lauder and I think in the future I'm just going to stick with that because it does everything I want it to do for my lashes. Now the mascara, the Monsieur Big mascara. It's fine. It's a good mascara. It's black, it's volumizing, it gives you length, uh, especially when I use it in conjunction with my little black primer, I'm usually pretty satisfied with the results. But with that said, is it better than my um, go-to, which is the Kiko Extra Sculpt Mascara? It's not. I actually think that it's on par with the Kiko Extra Sculpt Mascara. Maybe the Kiko Extra Sculpt Mascara is just not as black as this one, but it does everything else just as well for 
how much less? This is still three to five times more expensive when it's on sale compared to my usual mascara, which just does everything that I want it to do. And honestly, I, I would rather invest in the SL Lauder Little Bag Primer because I haven't found anything that does quite the same as this primer and keep my mascara on the more affordable side if I already have a favorite, then continue purchasing expensive mascaras. Now, I'm also a curious creature. I do want to every now and then try something new to maybe be surprised, to maybe, you know, discover a new favorite. But I've tried quite a lot of high-end mascaras since trying the Kiko mascara. I've tried a mascara from Yves Saint Laurent, I tried two mascaras from Pat McGrath Labs, both mascaras from Pat McGrath Labs, and now the Lancome is too big. And all of them are good mascaras, they're solid mascaras, but they're not better than the Kiko Extra Sculpt. So, you know, my quest to top the Kiko Extra Sculpt continues. Okay, and last but not least, before we proceed to the uh, empties, I wanted to talk about two lip products that have stood out in my collection in the past um, month or so. One of them is, again, not a new product in my collection. It's actually something that I've had for at least two years. But I recently purchased uh, the full size of. I had a mini of this product and now I purchased the full size. And the product in question is the uh, Flash 3 Matte Trans from Pat McGrath Labs, which I now have in this really cute limited edition pink packaging. I bought this uh, at Black Friday when she had the lipsticks for 16 euros on sale and I couldn't be happier that I purchased the full size. I already have um, given the mini to someone else who will really enjoy it and I continue to be enamored with this lipstick. It is just such a perfect lipstick. It's just so comfortable for being a matte lipstick. It has such beautiful flattering undertones. It's like a um, deep brown red nude and the longevity on this lipstick is incredible. I do take it with me when I go to work to reapply it but quite honestly I don't need to reapply it. I can put it on in the morning, I can have lunch and unless I have like a greasy hamburger midday I don't need to reapply my lipstick. If there is one color from the matte trans lipsticks that I would highly recommend it's Flash 3. Flash 3 is an an outstanding lipstick. And one of the reasons, by the way, that I have been using Flash 3 a little bit more in the past couple of uh, weeks has been the Natasha Denona Face and Eye Glam Palette because the two make a beautiful combination. Like the undertones are very complementary. So um, wearing the two has been one of my go-tos. I'm too lazy to think about what to wear, but I want to look fabulous anyway. These two save the day each and every time. And the last lipstick, again, nothing new, nothing that I haven't already owned for at least a good year. And that is one of my uh, Lisa Eldridge lipsticks. This is the shade Velvet... Sorry, I took the wrong lipstick. Let me pull out the right color. This is the shade Velvet uh, Dragon, which is a very difficult to describe color and I think one of the most unique colors that Lisa Eldridge has come out with. It's this like yellow amber colored red shade. It's super unique, super pretty. And what's interesting about this lipstick is that I bought it a while ago. I think it's super unique. I really like it, but I wasn't really wearing it that much. And I can't really tell you why. Maybe it has something to do with the fact that I didn't really have clothing that went really well with this color, but now I do. I have worn this dress a couple of times and I've also posted a bunch of pictures with it on Instagram. I'll try to like screenshot and put somewhere on the side here. But I have this dress now which has this um, golden and teal blue and a little bit of this kind of red uh, woven into the pattern of the dress. And since I love wearing the dress, I have loved wearing Dragon together with it because they, they just match absolutely perfectly. And because of that, I kind of rediscovered Dragon and I've been wearing it a lot more, which is awesome because I love the color and I just never was wearing it, which is a shame. Oh God, I have rambled for a full 40 minutes. I need to, I need to be more concise with my ramblings. This is only my first video, you guys. I'm going to learn and get better at it. Okay, now before we finish off, I just wanted to share a couple of empties with you. The only makeup empty that I have to share with you is my uh, Pixie Epoxy from Firini. Firini is an indie brand and Pixie Epoxy is one of the original, if not the original glitter glue to be released on the market. Um, and I would probably still be repurchasing this if it wasn't for the fact that we now have to pay extra customs and taxes on everything that comes from outside the EU. 
and the shipping for this would probably be something in the ballpark of $10. And the product itself is inexpensive, it's only like $6 or $7, but if you put the shipping together with the extra customs that I have to pay for it, it just becomes too expensive for me, uh, which is why I basically scraped whatever I could uh, out of it, and now I have to part with one of the most iconic products that I have had in my collection. If you're in the US and you're looking for a affordable solid glitter glue, then I would definitely recommend Pixie Epoxy to you. Uh, I have substituted now Pixie Epoxy with a similar product from NYX because I have much more easy access to uh, NYX products and that is the NYX uh, glitter glue which works perfectly fine, it's much more accessible to me and it's about the same price as this but then without all the uh, added extra costs. Okay, uh, I only have one body care product to share with you in my empties and this is my uh, body butter from the Body Shop and that is the Almond Milk Body Butter from the Body Shop. This is one of their um, like mini sizes, it was part of a gift set. So around the Christmas holidays um, the Body Shop always has like 40% off of a bunch of products. They had a they had a kit which had like five of those sort of like mini sizes of their body butters together and the whole kit was uh, I want to say around 35 euros to 40 euros something in the range but then with the discount it was 50% off so it was something like 18 to 20 bucks and I love the body butters from the body shop they are so nourishing they continue to hydrate your skin for hours if not days after you apply them and, and they're the only product that truly hydrates my skin in the depth of the winter when, when my skin gets really really dry so I bought that bundle and this is the uh, first body butter that I went through and almond milk is just such a non-offensive, such a subtle, pleasant smell that everyone will enjoy around you and my husband can always smell me after I have used this body butter and he always uh, compliments me how nice I smell after I have used it. And I have to tell you, I'm actually enjoying the whole concept of like the minis because in the past I've always bought like the big tops and it would take me ages to go through them and by the end I would be making myself to go through them because I've gotten a bit bored with the scent. So I'm a huge fan of these like small sizes that you can go through a bit more quickly and then jump to the next one and try a different scent. Sorry, I'm basically a toddler. I have the attention span of a goldfish. I have three skincare products to share with you and they are all from Paula's Choice because 99.99% um, .99 of my skincare consists of Paula's Choice and whatever isn't Paula's Choice is for you. So the first product I want to share with you is my Paula's Choice Ultra Rich moisturizer with coconut oil and shea butter which is meant to be used for very dry skin. I just finished this after being at it for at least two years uh, and of course I this wasn't the primary moisturizer that I was using, I was rotating between this and other ones in my collection. I really really love this moisturizer especially if you're suffering from extremely dry skin. I discovered this moisturizer when I was pregnant and um, midway through my pregnancy I um, had my usual hay fever symptoms but aside from the usual runny nose and itchy eyes I got an extra added bonus of these horrible like eczema like red spots on my face, only on my face, that were itchy and dry AF. Nothing else in my skincare uh, routine at the time could salvage my skin, so I went on the Polish Choice website and I purchased this moisturizer, which I had been afraid to do up till that point because I have more like normal to oily skin and this is meant for people with very very dry skin. So I always thought, no, this is going to be too heavy for my skin, I'm not going to enjoy it, leave it. But then I tried it. I fell absolutely in love with it and it also taught me the lesson that if you have oily skin you should not steer clear of the very moisturizing uh, products because they might actually help your skin to become less oily, if that makes any sense to you. The next product that I pent is one that is a staple in my collection and that is the 2% BHA liquid exfoliant. I've gone through several of these. I already have a new one open. This is a staple for me because BHA is the exfoliant made for uh, people with my skin type. I have large pores, I have a lot of blackheads, um, I used to have more acne, now not anymore, thanks to Paula's Choice. 
it's very lightweight it doesn't irritate the skin i don't use it every day i use it every other day something like this is really indispensable for my skincare routine and i have absolutely noticed that using this has um, cleared up my pores it has made them smaller and i have a lot less um, issues with acne breakouts or like pimples ever i don't have i basically don't have pimples I, if i have a pimple nowadays i'm shocked and the last empty is my Polish Choice Pore Clarifying Charcoal Gel Mask. This is another staple. I basically use this as the ultimate, you know, pore clarifying product in my routine. I uh, use it only once a week in the weekends and I really, really enjoy it. So there's really not much more to say about it other than I already have a new one uh, that is open in my current skincare rotation. And I will probably continue purchasing it because I've really been happy with the results. Whew. I feel like we talked for a really long time about a bunch of products and I'm really hoping that you are enjoying this um, new type of format on my channel. I'm sorry if this video turned out very very long but on the other hand you know me if you didn't think this was going to be a rambly video it's kind of your fault that you didn't take a cup of coffee and a snack. Anyways thank you so much for watching let me know what your general thoughts are about the video about the products that I mentioned about your you know monthly favorites and um, fails and we shall see each other again in my next video. Bye!